Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Dagan and welcome to 5 Minutes of Family History where each week I share with you 5 minutes of some of my favorite family history how-tos and then give you assignments to do at home to further your own family history. Today we're going to learn how to enter your family names into your tree on Family Search. If you didn't have a chance to collect your family information yet, that's okay. You can still learn how to enter information just by entering your own information into your family tree. If you're joining us for the first time and haven't yet created your Family Search account, I recommend you take just five minutes and watch the first episode to learn how to create your account so that you're all caught up. When you log into Family Search, you're going to notice that there are five menu options along the top bar. Hover over the Family Tree tab and select Tree from this menu. This is actually a digital version of your pedigree charts and family group records. As we enter information, I'll mention a few rules to keep in mind as we go along. First, you'll enter information about yourself. Open your record by left-clicking on your name, which will be there from your account registration. Then click either on your name, which will be in blue, or click on person at the bottom of the box. Enter your full first and middle names in the first name section. The last name section is where we encounter rule number one. If you are a female or entering a female's name in the future, always enter the birth surname or the maiden name as the last name. This helps link females to their proper father and spouse. If the person you are entering was commonly known by another name other than their birth name, you may add an alternate name in the other section. Enter the gender, then enter the birth date and birthplace. This brings up rule number two. Whenever you enter information for dates or places, it's important to standardize the date and place by putting it in the correct format, which I refer to as the smallest to largest rule. For dates, put the smallest unit of time to the largest unit of time. The two-digit day, the month, which is spelled out completely, then specify the four-digit year. For places, we put the smallest measure of land to the largest, the village or city, followed by the county, then the state, and the country, separating each with a comma. As you're typing, a drop-down menu will open with places. If you see the correct location, select it. In the death date area, it should be noted that you're living. This is important as it will keep your information private and out of the public domain to protect your privacy. For deceased ancestors data, you would standardize the death date and place in the exact same way as the other dates. To add parents, spouse, or children, you can add them directly from your individual record at the bottom in the family member section. Or you can go back to the pedigree view by clicking on view tree at the top right and then clicking the plus sign next to the family member you wish to add. Each next older generation of parents will add in a line to the right. A family group builds downward from each couple so you'll see the father, mother, and children all stack on top of one another. We edited our own record today but when you add a new person for the first time the screen looks slightly different like this. When you enter a deceased family member's name, it's important to enter their birth, marriage, or death date and places if possible, as Family Search will search the family tree to see if that person already exists in the tree. If they do, you have the option to select a person that is already in the tree, which is really helpful as it will save you time by linking them to your line. If Family Search doesn't find a match, you may click create to create a record for the new person. Rule number three, only add information you've confirmed and for which you can add a source. Just as you need official proof of your existence for a driver's license or passport, your ancestors need official proof of their existence. This helps you to add the correct people to your tree. We'll cover more about finding and citing sources in episode seven. We'll talk more in episode eight about how to find what records are available for the countries of your ancestors. Rule number four, don't guess or play with names, dates, or places in Family Search. Family Search algorithms search the records and make recommendations for you based on what you add. If that information isn't accurate, the recommendations for you and all those working on that line will be incorrect. Rule number five, and my favorite, don't let the fear of making mistakes stop you from doing family history. We're all imperfect and make mistakes. To help with this, every change made is tracked in a change log, which allows you to track what has been done and reverse it if necessary. 
you may find the change log on the right side of an individual record. So please continue to add your family information and to make connections on your family tree. I hope that helps you get started creating your own family tree. I'll elaborate on many of these concepts in future videos, so please subscribe below and follow us on Instagram for more tips. This week, I posted your five minute daily homework assignments in the comments section below the video. These assignments will help you be prepared for next week's video, which we're going to talk about how to add photos to Family Tree. I'd love to hear your comments on where you'd like to go more in depth on your family history, and I hope that you have a great week. Take care.